It's Tuesday, so what does that mean? We're going to continue our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. Come and join us. Maybe this week is the worst one of all. Welcome back to the Junkman, everybody. It's me, the Junkman, coming back at you with this weekly video series where we search for the worst action figure line based on a movie ever made. And after this episode, we we'll only have three more to go. Now, before we get started with this video, let's go back to one of the earlier videos and explain how we're going to rank these figures. First up, we're going to look at the look of the action figure. Does the action figure look like what we see in the movie? Do they dress the same? Does it look like the actors that the film's based on? Then I'm going to look at the play value. Are these figures worth playing with as a kid? Would kids enjoy playing with something like this, even if maybe they don't look like what they do in the movie? Then I'm going to rate the marketing. Did the toy company time it right? Did they release the action figures way too early to where the time the movie came out no one cared? Or did they release the action figures way too late where kids just moved on and didn't care either way? And then I'm going to rate packaging. To sell kids on action figures, you got to catch their eye. And the packaging does that. Look at the vintage Star Wars action figure cards. Your eyes are going to connect with the package and it's going to call kids to pick up the action figure, look at it, and decide if they want it. And last, I'm going to rank the quality. Do these figures hold up? Sure, we can all buy an action figure and stand it up somewhere and it will last for a couple years. But does it stand up to kids throwing them off dressers and against the wall? Man, I sure did look young back then. And I'm sure some of you are sick of looking at that video of me explaining the rules, but... For the new guys, I have to add that into every video. Sorry about that. But let me explain again that the ranking system in some of these categories are different. If a figure gets a 5 out of 5 star ranking for the marketing, that to me doesn't hold the same value as a 5 star rating for the look of the figure. Because the look of the figure is a lot harder to get right. The marketing is pretty easy. I just want to explain that because some of you have been confused about that. Because I didn't really explain it well in some of the earlier videos. Now, let's continue our search for the worst action figure line ever based on a film. This week's search takes us back to 1997, where the group of men wearing black suits have to fight aliens. We work for a highly funded yet unofficial government agency. We'll take it from here. Who the hell are you? INS Division 6. There is no Division 6. Our mission is to monitor extraterrestrial activity on Earth. <laughs> Men in Black was released on July 2nd, 1997 by Columbia Pictures. It would go on to gross over $6 million worldwide and kick off one of the biggest franchises of the time. The movie would spawn comic book series, video games, a cartoon series, and what all summer blockbuster movies needs, an action figure line. To bring the big screen movie to the toy rooms, Columbia Pictures reached out to Galoob Toys, a toy line that was mostly known for making small micro machines toys, but also had a history in the action figure line. Or de atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. I feel like I'm gonna break this damn thing. Oh, it gets better. Men in black. Protecting the Earth from the scum of the universe. Now, Galoob also produced at the same time bend them action figures. Bendums, you know, the them rubber figures with the wire inside of them, and they were all aliens. A lot of people think those aliens are part of the action figure line, although they're two separate lines. If you look at the back of the action figure card, it doesn't show the Bendum aliens, and if you look at the back of the aliens card, it doesn't show the action figures. So, when we're ranking the action figure line, we're not going to look at the Bendum action figures. I mean, come on, can you really count wire rubber figures as action figures? No, you can't. We're going to talk action figures. So, let's start with the first category, the look of the action figure. Let's see how good Galoo was able to take the look of the film and put it into the look of the toys. So, do they look like the actors we see on the screen? No, not at all. The two main heroes, the men in black, look nothing really like Tommy Lee Jones or Will Smith. The flame blasting Jay looks like he's in pain. And the slime fighting Kay? He has a pose like he just took a big Lincoln log in his pants. The figures have a really odd pose. The one basic alien action figure is the alien attack Edgar. And the detail here is a lot better than with the human figures. The best in this line is the deluxe alien figures that have a lot better detail. Like so many of the other lines we've looked at, 
The humans are bad and the aliens or monsters is where the designers really spent their time. I'm not sure why so many toy companies felt they couldn't do both. Either they put their time into effort into the humans and the monsters look bad, or they put all their time into the monsters and the humans look bad. I'm not sure why so many toy companies couldn't spend the time to get both right. The aliens here is the best looking thing in the line, and you can tell the designers really did love doing them. But we have to rank this line as a whole. I can't just rank it on the action figures or just on the aliens. We have to put it together. So out of the five star ranking system, the look of the men in black figure is gonna get a three out of five stars. And it's all thanks to the aliens. Now that we got a look out of the way, what about play value? Were these fun for kids to play with? Well, let's take a look at play value and rank it. Well, the figures, even if odd looking, come with a little action figure stand that was like a small mini playset for the figures. The play stand playset kind of gives you a feeling of a bigger, better Happy Meal toy. But it does add something different and makes the line a little bit more fun. The aliens talked and had a lot of play features. One of the most fun is the deluxe figure of Jeeves. He doesn't really do much as a figure, but the toy lets you change the look of him from a human to a scary alien. A lot of the extra play features might not be something that's fun for months or even weeks, but they were fun to play with and you can't blame Galoo for trying something different. So out of the five star ranking, what are we gonna give the ranking for the play value? Well, out of five stars, the play value is gonna get a four. The play value here is, they give you something a little different. So if you bought this line, at least even if it wasn't fun for a long time, it was something different than the other action figures you might've had at home. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at packaging. Does the package catch the kids' eyes walking down the toy aisle? Is there something that would make kids beg their parents to buy? Let's take a look. Let's start at the card. The title is big. Not only is the movie title easy to spot, they even have the abbreviation MIB and it really catches the eye. If you were a kid and just saw the movie, this package would catch your eye for sure. The odd thing here, again for the figure, is the odd pose and how they're posed in the bubble. The alien ambush J looks like he's doing some kind of funky Fresh Prince dance. And the other J figure looks like he's trying to scratch a place on his back that he can't reach. And let's look at the K in the package. It looks like he's about to take a big fat doo-doo. The oddest looking one in the package is the alien Egger, who in the package looks like he just fired a shotgun blast to his face and blew out the back of his head. The bad part of the packaging, the small stand playset. It's hard to tell exactly what it is just from looking at it. The back of the package gives you a lot of details. It tells you about the fun, about the playset stand, the other figures you can get in the line, and a little information about a character. Always nice touches. So let's rank the packaging. How good do they do to grab kids' attentions in the store? Well, out of the 5 star rating system, we're going to give packaging a 4 out of 5. They actually did pretty well with this. I was kind of surprised, although the odd pose of the human figures gives it a kind of odd look in the bubble, but overall I think they did very well getting kids to notice them in the store. Now let's look at marketing. This is the easiest one to get right, and most toy lines do. You can't release an action figure line based on a movie too early, or even worse, too late. So let's see how Men in Black did with the marketing. Here Galoob got the release of the figures right. The figures hit around the same month of the release of the film and was in pretty big supply after the release. There's nothing much worse for a kid to see a movie and then can't find the action figures for it. As I have said in the past, this is the easiest thing to get right, so their ranking value here doesn't hold as much value as let's say the look of the figure. So let's rank the marketing. Out of five stars, the marketing gets a five star. And there you go, a five out of five. But again, the marketing is pretty easy to get right. Another thing that's easy to get right and all companies should get right is the quality. Do they hold up? Can you throw these figures up and down the street and kick them around? Do they stay together with a rough play? Well, let's take a look at that. Overall, I couldn't find anything bad about the quality of the action figures. From talking to people that had them as kids, I could find no real issue. I couldn't even find any broken ones online. Now, any figure can be broken with hard play. But with just normal kid play, I couldn't find anything really bad about this line. If you just played normally with them, they would last you years. So let's rank the quality of the men in black figures. So out of five stars, the quality is gonna get five stars. But let's see how the toy does on its final score. So overall, how do the figures rank? Well, the humans are ugly and look nothing like the characters in the film and have dumb poses. 
Sorry, but playing with an action figure that's always in a running position is not fun. But this line is about the aliens, and this is where the line is at its best. They look good, and they're fun to play with. Even the figures add some different type of play value than most figures at the time. As for the packaging, it's really eye-catching, and it really makes you want to buy the aliens. The marketing was right on time, not too late, not too early. And the quality is pretty good compared to some of the other figures we've looked at. When I first started looking into reviewing this line, I hated it. I hated the look of the humans, but that was before I really dug deep into looking at the aliens. If I was just judging the two human characters, I might give this ranking a 1, but we have to look at the action figure line as a whole. Humans and Aliens. So for the overall score for the Men in Black action figures, what are we going to give it? Well, out of 5 stars, it's going to get a 4. There you go. The line's not as bad as I thought. When I was getting this list up, having people tell me about what action figure lines they hate the most, this one came up quite a bit. So I was kind of shocked when I dug into it and saw that's really not that bad. Again, the humans look horrible and nothing like the characters, and they are bad. But again, this line's about the aliens. So I don't think this week that we found the worst movie-based action figure line. So our search continues for the worst action figure line based on a movie. Who knows, maybe we already looked at that action figure line, or maybe we'll look at it next week. Yeah! We're only down to three more episodes of the search for the worst action figure line based on a movie. I want again to thank you for watching. As always, please support this channel by going to Patreon. Links in the description up there or in the description below. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about the men in black action figures. Did you hate them as a kid, or did you love them? And thumbs up this video so YouTube knows you like my content, and we'll throw it out there for other people to see. And we'll be back next Tuesday for our search for the worst action figure line based on a movie, and don't worry, videos throughout the week. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.